Welcome to the brief English summary of the second series on my channel. My two previous films were focused on the concept of sustainable procurement. The central part of this series was my interview with Dr. Marta Anthoff, Associate Professor at the University of Copenhagen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it was my great pleasure to join Dr. Jaroslav Koa in our meeting to discuss sustainable public procurement. It was truly inspiring and thought provoking. We had a chance to not only discuss the theme and the concept and the reality of them really in practice, particularly on the Polish market, but we also discuss is uh, sustainable procurement a goal or is it a tool to apply to achieve different goals, how that works, what are some of the good practices where risks and limits exist to sustainable public procurement and what future holds. So we concluded ultimately that the proactive approach is probably the best one as um, we predict that potentially there might be more obligatory rules, particularly in context of climate and environmental protection. So we hope that you find this interesting and we warmly encourage you and I particularly warmly encourage you to come back and listen to um, Dr. Yaroslav Koa again. It's worth starting with the question what does it mean to make public procurement sustainable? Based on the European Commission definition, we could answer that the sustainable public procurement is a process by which uh, public authorities seek to achieve the appropriate balance between the three pillars of sustainable development, economic, social and environmental, when procuring goods, services or works at all stages of the project. I think the European Commission definition properly emphasizes uh, the essence of the concept of sustainable growth in reference uh, to the field of public procurement through this definition. The concept of uh, sustainable public uh, procurement is not a set of uh, specific legal tools that make purchasing sustainable. It refers to a process of seeking balance while procuring. It means a way of thinking. It is rather a goal than a tool. I claim that uh, such a concept has been expressed brilliantly in the current Polish public procurement law provisions that came into force on the 1st of January 2021. It is obvious that uh, there are some institutions of public procurement law with an evident and specific potential for sustainable development goals. Among them we could indicate um, contracting award criteria, uh, grounds of exclusion from contract award procedures referring to social or environmental aspects or the possibility of uh, reserving the right to participate in procurement procedures to sheltered workshops and economic operators whose main aim is uh, the social and uh, professional integration of disabled or disadvantaged persons. But the Polish lawmaker reminds us that the principle of sustainable growth should permit every activity of the state and its units and every institution of public procurement law to a greater or lesser, sometimes negligible extent, can implement that principle. Therefore, the most important task of each contracting authority is at least to consider if particular procurement could be used to achieve sustainable goals. If a particular contract could enable us to accomplish other objectives than merely direct uh, economic benefits uh, on the part of the contracting authority. In this context, we should interpret Article 17 of the new Polish Public Procurement Law Act. According to this provision, the contracting authority should award the contract in a manner ensuring the best quality of supplies, services and construct construction works justified by the nature of the contract within the framework of the funds that the awarding entity may allocate for its execution and obtaining the best effects of the contract including social, environmental and economic effects if it is possible to obtain any of this effect in a given contract uh, in relation to the incurred uh, expenditure. This provision is really significant for at least two reasons. 
Firstly, because the Polish lawmaker confirms that acting in the paradigm of sustainable development, sustainable growth, is a way of thinking. Therefore, the Polish contracting authorities are generally not violently forced to apply particular sustainable legal tools um, in each contract awards procedure. They are obliged to consider if particular public procurement has potential to realize any sustainable goals. It is worth emphasizing that entities such as the so-called public contracting authorities uh, shall prior to initiation uh, of contract award proceedings analyze the needs and requirements having regard to the type and value of the contract. The result of fulfilling such obligation should be a needs analysis report especially including conclusions on the possibility of taking account of the social, environmental or innovative aspects of the contract. After conducting such an analytical process, contracting authorities should choose and apply suitable legal instrument um, that enable them to achieve their goals in the most efficient way. So the normative obligation of the Polish contracting authorities is to think about sustainable development while procuring. The European Commission indicates many good practices that prove the economic effectiveness of the sustainable approach. I also, from my practice, I also know of public contracts awarded in Poland uh, that enabled contracting authorities to achieve both sustainable goals, especially ecological effect, and the financial effect parallelly. Therefore, I believe that due to such a solution being established in the new Polish Public Procurement Law Act, it is much more probable that contracting authorities will notice that a sustainable approach uh, to public procurement allows us not only to achieve sustainable goals, but also may be profitable in financial terms. The second reason. It is really important that Article 17 of the Public Procurement Law Act reminds us that the economic calculation should always be taken into consideration by the contracting authority while trying to achieve um, such goals through the purchasing process. Public procurement should be used as a market-based instrument and, such, uh, and as such um, can be used to achieve societal, environmental or other so-called secondary or sustainable goals. Therefore, uh, the Polish lawmaker stresses that contracting authorities shall always analyze if it is possible to obtain any of these goals in a given contract in relation to the incurred expenditure, taking into account the framework of the funds that the awarding entity may allocate for execution of such contract. The Polish lawmaker is aware of fact that sometimes persistent use of pre-ecological or pro-societal solutions in each contract award procedure would be counterproductive. It was also confirmed by the European Court of Justice, for example, in the Winstrom case. Unfortunately, the idea of achieving sustainable goals uh, through public procurement is sometimes approached as a vagary, as an idea detached uh, from market realities. In this context, it is really significant that Polish contracting authorities are not forced to identify and realize secondary goals in each public procurement procedure. They are obliged to consider the potential of their activity in the context of strategic goals. As a result, the Polish lawmaker defeats the myth uh, that a sustainable approach uh, to purchasing is an ideology. It proves that it is a way of economic and responsible thinking. That is why I said in the previous video uh, that the newest Polish public procurement law may seem interesting and even inspiring also for people uh, dealing with public procurement law in other countries. I hope this video was interesting for you as well. Please do not hesitate to discuss this material in the comments section and first of all, 
please subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. Thanks for watching and see you soon.